time. The silent herald of life and death, success or failure. The unseen force that measures man's destiny, reaching its most fateful moment as it slowly strikes the 11th hour. Don't let it happen. You can't. God, please, you mustn't. Promise me that you won't. If you do, you, you'll never be able to avoid it all. No. No, Clark. 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 Don't. Don't you understand? That's a coffin. You're stepping into a coffin. Clark. Oh, no. 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 Rita. Oh, no. Rita, darling. Wake up. Wake up. him. Clark. Wake up. You hear me now. Wake up. Clark, Clark, darling. It's all right. You just had another of those, those nightmares of yours. It was the same one. Oh, darling, do please try to pull yourself together. It's late. What on earth will the neighbors think if you carry on like this every time? I'm sorry, darling. I really am, but... The dream is so real. The coffin, it was kind of floating, and and you were so dead. Hello there. Rita, may I come in? Who's that, Carol? Yeah, yeah, I was just passing, thought I'd drop in. Is that okay with you? Why, sure, sure, Carol. Good to see you. My, you look so fresh and young this morning. Oh, thanks. I feel great, too. Oh, top of the world. I met the most divine man last evening. He's a doctor. Oh, very English. <laughs> but I, I'm sure I'll have to get used to that. Well, if he can make you look as radiant as this, I should think you'll soon adapt yourself. Well, tell me all about it. Oh, uh, I'd rather not go into details at the moment. After all, it may not come to anything. You may not even ask me out again. I don't believe that. And neither do you. Oh, well, I guess not. Oh, but gee, I'm sorry, Rita. I'm so full of myself this morning. I didn't ask how you were. Have you had another rough night? Yes, but like you, I guess I'd rather not speak about it. Oh, sure? I feel so, well, so ashamed the mornings after. It's as though I've been caught out in some stupidly childish act. I guess we'd better try to forget it. No. No, I think that would be a mistake. It won't help at all if you keep repressing everything. Oh, sure, it will help if you talk about it. I, I can't. I really can't, Carol. Not because I don't want to. It's it's just that afterwards, in the mornings after I've had a bad night, I, I can't really remember what it was all about. Well, it can't be all that bad, then. But it is. It is bad. It's real bad. When I have these dreams, and, and one in particular, it's all so real that I, I feel I'm living the whole thing. I can't describe to you how vivid my emotions are. It's only now, in, in the cold light of morning, that I feel drained of any feeling and, and not quite sure what it was all about. And yet I know it's a premonition. Somewhere in that recurring dream is a warning. A warning? Yes, a warning about Clark and his safety. You see, the only clear thing I can recall afterwards is that Clark's dead. Dead because he stepped into a coffin. Stepped into a coffin? You mean he was alive in your dream and he gets into a coffin? Oh, golly gee, that sure is some nightmare. It makes me seem an hysterical, neurotic fool, doesn't it? But I can't help it, Carol. I, I just can't. I, I can't explain it. I can't even explain it to myself. Oh, there, there, honey. Clark doesn't understand it at all. He's getting as sore as a snake at me, and I don't blame him. But I don't want it to happen, Carol. Honest, I don't. But I know it's more than that. In what way? Look, you're my best friend. We've been friends ever since school. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to talk to you like this, but... Well, you know how I've always been a little different from most people in the sense that... I do have hunches that somehow always come off. Oh, you mean that, that second sight we always used to rib you about at school? That's right. I believe the up-to-date phraseology is extrasensory perception. Oh, sure, I've heard all about that. Oh, I know you've been right about a lot of things that can't be explained logically. Yes. Yes, that's what I find so disturbing. You see, it isn't just this one dream, Carol. 
It's the fact that so many times the things I dream about actually happen. First, I, I get a sort of sudden awareness, and then I can remember what the dream was about. Oh, oh, you mean like people who've got a headache before a storm comes up? Yes, that's it. That's exactly it. Oh, Carol, don't laugh at me. And don't be scared, but I feel like that at this very moment. You do? Yes. Yes, I do. Shall I prove it to you? Clark's gone to work, and he shouldn't be back until after five. And yet I know he's on his way home. He's going to let himself in through that front door, and he's going to come bursting into this room very shortly. Oh, gee, Rita, you don't mean this. Yes. Yes, I do. I can even tell you what he'll say. He'll say, Hello, honey. I've got the most wonderful news. Guess what? It, you mean this? Yes. Yes, I... I don't know why I should feel this way, but I do. It's it's a feeling, you see, Carol. It's got nothing to do with knowledge as such. It's it's just a, a sense of knowing. Oh. oh, honey, I don't get it. But if Clark says it's wonderful news, then I guess there's nothing to be scared about. Oh, say, couldn't you do something about finding out the winner of the Newfoundland Handicap? I'm going to suggest to my new doctor friend that he takes me next Saturday. It doesn't work out like that, Carol. You can't just say... Listen, what is it? I didn't hear anything. It's Clark. He's just let himself in through the front door. I didn't hear a thing. I did. I'm used to the sound, you see. Hello, honey. I've got the most wonderful news. Guess what? Gosh. Oh. Oh, hello, Carol. I, I didn't see you there. Uh, Carol was passing and just dropped by. You're early, darling. What's the reason? I just told you. Great news. Absolutely terrific. I've just been made Western Area Manager. Oh, Clark, that's wonderful news. Oh, darling, congratulations. What, a promotion? Oh, gosh, I'm just thrilled for you, Clark. Thanks, honey. Clark, darling, what exactly does this mean? You mean in terms of dollars? Well, quite a raise. No, no, I, I, I was thinking about traveling. Well, of course, it means supervising all the depots on the Western Seaboard. I haven't gone into it in detail, but I, I guess I'll have to be away from home quite a bit. Oh, I see. But you mustn't let that worry you, honey. Why, this is what we've been working for for years. It's the first step up the rung of the ladder to success. We're on our way up from now on. Well, darling, you mightn't look so gloomy about it. At least wish me luck. I do, Clark. Oh, I do. All the luck in the world. <laughs> Carol, I, I just don't know what to say to you. I can't think how I can help you or these friends of yours. Bob Richardson, you are a doctor, aren't you? I am, yes. And you've got qualifications in psychiatry both in London and here in San Francisco. That's true. Then why can't you help, Rita? I've explained everything as clearly as I can. Surely there's something you can do about it. My dear Carol, I, I know you're very concerned about Rita and Clark, but I can't meddle in their private lives. But there must be a reason for the way Rita feels. Well, of course there's a reason, but it could be one of a thousand different things. At this stage, I don't know, and I, I don't see how I can interfere. If I got Rita to come and see you, come of her own free will and talk to you about all her troubles, uh, that wouldn't be interfering, would it? No, I suppose not. Right, then that's settled. I'm talking to Rita right away. You're really very kind, Carol. I know you're only talking like this because you want to help me, but I don't think it'll be the slightest use. I'd like you to meet Bob anyway. I just thought that, well, you could chat to him professionally at the same time. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're trying to get him a new patient at a cut-rate fee, but... <laughs> oh, Rita, <laughs> well, I didn't mean it. All right, I'll go along in the morning. Meantime, I'm going to get an early night. Oh, isn't Clark in? Oh, no, no, he's out on a trip, the first one. I guess a lot depends on it. Oh, you're going to be alone here tonight? Uh, wouldn't you like me to stay over? Oh, no, don't you worry. I'll be all right. You run along now. Although, if Clark does go away on a long trip, I'll take you up on the offer. Oh, any time. And go and see Bob tomorrow, won't you? Just to please me. Yes, yes, I will. Just to please you. I I'll see him tomorrow. Now, please, I must go to bed. I'm quite exhausted. Will you please fasten your safety belts? Please fasten your safety belts. Hey, Stuart, what's the idea? 
We're not near Los Angeles yet, are we? Now, this is an emergency, sir. Now, please don't anyone panic. There's a little engine trouble. Nothing to worry about. Nothing at all. Just remain calm. But look! Look out there! It's on fire! The whole wing! Hey, We've got to get out! Panic. This thing's going to crash! We Everybody must get out! Board. It's like a flying coffin! That's what it is! A flying coffin! So now you can remember the dream, Rita. I may call you Rita, mayn't I? Oh, yes, of course. I'm sorry to inflict all this on you, Doctor. Oh, please, let's make it Bob. If we are friends, it must be on equal terms. Just think that it's coincidental that I happen to be a doctor. As far as you're concerned, I'm more Carol's friend than anything else. That's very kind of you. Tell me some more, Rita. Carol visited you, and after she'd left, you went to bed and dreamt that same dream again. Yes. Only this time I woke up on my own accord. I could remember every detail... It was an airplane that was the coffin. And Clark, my husband, was trapped inside it. He was screaming to get out and the plane was on fire. Oh, it was so real. So terrifyingly real. Ah, you've had this dream before and never been able to recall the details. Not until last night. But now I can remember it. I knew it was the same dream. I see. Rita, do you mind if I ask you a personal question? Are you happy with your husband? Yes, Bob. Yes, I am. I'm happy with him. I love him, and I'm not over-jealous of him. This is not a case of an anxiety dream, because I don't trust him away from me, if that's what you're thinking. You're an astute woman, Rita. Believe me, a plain case of jealousy would be easy to cope with. No, it's more than that. Much more, and much more final. You seriously believe that you have a hidden sense that tells you your husband is in danger if he travels? Is that it? That's it. That's it, exactly. And I don't know what to do about it. Have you spoken to your husband about it? No. But, of course, I checked up with him first thing this morning. He was on his first trip out of town, just down the coast by car. He was fine, and he'll be back this afternoon. You don't fear for his safety on the roads? What? Oh, no, no, he'll be fine. No, he'll come home around 4.30, and he'll say, Gosh, what a trip. But I think for a first step, it was well worth it. You think he'll use those very words? Yes. Yes, he'll use those very words. Gosh, what a trip. But I think for a first step, it was well worth it. I knew it. I knew you'd say that. Why, darling? What do you mean? Don't you approve? Yes. Yes, of course I do. I meant I knew that it would all go well. <sighs> Gee, but I'm tired. Well, I've got your favorite supper. And there's no need for you to bother yourself at all for the rest of the day. A nice, quiet evening and early to bed. Oh, I wish that could be. Oh, why can't it? You don't seem to realize I, I've done so much business that I've now got to do all the paperwork. I'll have to have it ready. Full report tomorrow. Oh. Oh, I see. But don't you worry. I'll be shut away in the study. Why don't you call Carol and take in a movie or something? I can't very well do that. Carol has a steady boyfriend these days. Oh, has she? Good for her. He's a doctor. Very English and a bit la da but rather sweet. A doctor, eh? Yes, actually, he's very well qualified. All sorts of degrees in psychology and all that. Oh, one of the head shrinker types. He seems sincere enough. He certainly went out of his way to help me. Help you? Rita, you don't mean that you've been, well, been consulting this guy in a professional capacity? Not really, though we did meet in his consulting room. I see. You talked about your dreams, I suppose. As a matter of fact, we did. Yes. Oh, gosh. What do you want to go and get mixed up in all that mumbo-jumbo for? Look, honey, I've got a job of work to do. It's a chance we've been waiting for for years. I'd feel a lot better if I knew you weren't so anxious about it. I know, I know, Clark. And I, I don't want to add to your burden. Heaven knows you've enough to cope with. I understand that, but... Oh, last night I had that dream again. Only this time I could recall everything that happened. That coffin I've been so afraid of. I found out what it is. It's an aircraft. Clark, I won't bother you with this ever again if you'll just promise me this one thing. Promise me that whatever happens, you'll never fly on these business trips. Please promise me, darling. Please promise. Well... Go on, Rita. You've told me all about Bob and what you said to him. What did Clark say when you asked him to promise never to take a plane when he went on business? Oh, he couldn't give me any reassurance at all. 
He said that he'd have to comply with the company instructions. Oh, I suppose he's right after all. He can hardly go to his boss and say, I won't fly because my wife says I mustn't. Now, can he? No, I guess not. But, well, gee, this makes it kind of tough on the nerves, doesn't it? I mean, supposing he does have to take an air trip, I'm going to be as nervous as a kitten. I know. And the thing's getting nearer, isn't it, Carol? It seems there's an almost inevitable quality about it. Oh, now, don't feel like that, honey. I really don't believe in it. It's just the way you put things. Oh, I'm sure Clark's work will be all done by car anyway. So what's the worry? Oh, come on. Forget it for a while. It'll all work out okay. I'm sure it will. I tell you, Bob, I've never been caught up in anything like this before. It's getting a hold on me, too. Oh, Carol, my dear, you mustn't allow it to affect you. Oh, but it does. It does. Oh, I guess I'm crazy. I should be thinking about my own life, my own chances of marriage and settling down, but I'm more and more worried about Rita and Clark. Oh, nothing's happened to them so far, and he's been on the new job for some months now. Yes, I know. But I visited Rita again today, and she had that remote, far-away look about her. Oh, I'm getting so darn sensitive to all this business myself that I can tell that she knows something that's going to happen, and happen soon. But I've got to go, Rita. Don't you understand that? I've just got to. But it means flying, Clark. A trip to New York means flying. Well, I, I guess it may do some time. The itinerary hasn't been worked out in detail. We have to stop over at several places, but, well, there may be some flights included. I don't deny that. Clark, don't go. Please don't go. I'd rather you give up everything. Your whole career, everything. I'd rather start all over again right from the bottom. Rita, please. It isn't worth it. Really, it isn't. It may not be for you, but it is for me. I've worked and slaved for years to get this chance. You may not want to start all over again, but I'll be darned if I will. I'm too old and too experienced. I'm a hand that I'm going to throw away a whole career on your neurotic dreams. Oh, I am. I'm sorry, honey. But that's the way it is. Yes, that's the way it is. Perhaps that's the way it's meant to be. All right, Clark. I respect your decision. I'll ask Carol over to stay with me while you're away. That's if you don't mind. Mind? Of course I don't mind. Oh, honey... Don't feel so bad about it. I'll be back, you'll see. I'll be back and ready to go on to even better things. Just trust me and my judgment by way of a change. Huh? All right, Clark. I'll try. Well, Clark, I guess you sure did a good job for us today. Oh, thanks, Mr. Rolston. I'm glad you think so. <laughs> Not so much of the Rolston. Just call me Hank. Now, we're buddies from now on. Uh, say, wouldn't you like a... To move out is sort of permanent like, would you? We have a place for your man of capabilities in the uh, Rolstons. Well, I've only just started out in the sales area. I, I guess it would be kind of unfair to the company to consider such a step of this step. Yeah, sure, sure. Company loyalty. Good thing. And I approve. Well, uh, well, if you ever think of making a move, uh, remember us, won't you? I sure will. And I, I appreciate it very much, Mr. Rolston. I... <laughs> Well, I mean, Hank. Hello, boy. <laughs> Speaking of making a move, I, I guess I'd better excuse myself. The rest of the sales team will be ready, well, ready at the depot. We're working to rather a tight schedule. I wouldn't want to miss out on anything. Oh, sure, sure. You're flying, of course. Uh, can I drop you at the airport? No, no, I'm not flying. As a matter of fact, we're taking the train for the next leg of the journey. Train? It gives us a rest overnight and a chance to check up on things over a few drinks in the dining saloon. Now, that's a sensible policy. You know, I can see you boys know what you're doing. Okay, Clark. Nice meeting you. Have a good trip. I will, Hank, and thanks for everything. Uh, don't thank me, and uh, I'll just repeat my offer. If you ever want a desk job and a good future, remember Hank Rolston. Oh, I will. I promise you that. I certainly will. Hello? Oh, yes, this is Westridge 526351. Hello? Who's that? Oh, I'm sorry, but the line seems to be very bad. Could you manage to speak a little louder? Oh, no. No, this isn't Mrs. Rita Bennett. Mrs. Bennett's out at the moment. I'm just a friend who's staying with her. Can I give her a message? Oh, she'll be back shortly, I guess. Mr. Bennett? Oh, Clark's away on business trip down south. I don't know when he'll be... What's that? His firm? The director calling? 
What? Oh, no. No, we haven't heard anything about it. Oh, I'm sure Rita doesn't know. The papers? Oh, I haven't seen them. Oh, well, when did it happen? I see. Yes. Yes, sure, I'll tell her. Very well. Goodbye. Why, hello there. I didn't think you'd be in so soon, Carol. I wouldn't have hung around the shops had I known. I, I've been in for quite a while. Oh, it's so early for you. I, I, is there any mail? Well, Carol. Carol, what's wrong? You look terrible. Has uh, something happened? Oh, something happened to... Sit down, honey. What is it? Uh, sit down and I'll try to explain. Tell me direct, Carol. Direct and straight. I want to know the truth. It's Clark, isn't it? Yes, it's Clark. He was with all the sales promotion people on the westbound train out of Chicago. The train was derailed. It's been on television and in the press. Maybe you heard of it. No, no, I didn't. The company representatives were all in the same coach. It was the one in the center of the crash. The, there are no survivors. It, it can't be. I, I don't believe it. it. It can't be. I had the company director come out east on the phone just now. He assures me that it's true. And I urged him not to fly. I told him that to step into a plane would be a step into a coffin. How wrong I was. How horribly wrong. Oh, please, Rita. It isn't your fault. You can't blame yourself. I should never have allowed him to take that job. I told him it was wrong. I tried my best. I, I really did, Carol. I tried my best. Oh, you can't do anything about it, honey. If fate decrees, and I guess there's nothing any of us can do. Not even doctors like Bob. They're just as powerless as we are. I, I, I can't answer it, Carol. I, I'm sorry, but I can't. But, but what can we do? Oh, it's bound to be reporters. The firm, someone who wants to make inquiries. Just let it ring. Let it ring. Waiter. Rita, honey, where are you? Hello? Anyone at home? Clark! Clark, oh, darling, I can't believe it! You're alive and, and you're home. Oh, you've come back to me. In spite of everything, you've come back to me. Oh, now, baby, please. <laughs> please, I know this must be a shock. I, I guess you must have heard the news about the train smash. It was horrible. They told us that you were on board. The whole of your sales team. That's true. Most of them were killed outright. I tried to call you and explain, but the phone kept ringing. No one answered. The fact is, I got drinking with one of the customers and, well, I missed the train. Oh, thank heavens you did. There was only one way I could make up time. I hopped on a spare seat of the next aircraft out. I didn't like to let you know, but, well, at least I'm, I'm home safe and sound. Y y you flew back to me? That's right. Well, they say one should always reverse one's dreams, don't they? <laughs> I guess there's never been a truer case of it than what's happened tonight. There won't be any more doubts from now on, Rita. From now on, you're going to trust my judgment. Okay? Okay, darling. I'll trust your judgment and, and I won't have any more nightmares. That's a promise. <laughs> The makers of Bayer Aspirin, Insto Eye Drops, and Philips Tablets invite you to join them again as the moment of destiny approaches in the 11th hour. <laughs>